Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Uh, today we will continue talking about derivatives and primarily about the geometric um, meaning of the derivative to a function. And I'm talking um, about tangential line to a curve which represents the graph of this function. Now, this lecture is part of the advanced course of mathematics for uh, teenagers and uh, um, high school students. I suggest you to watch this lecture from unisor.com because every lecture has very detailed notes, plus you can have test exercises and uh, even take exams. Site is free and uh, you can take as many exams as you want until you will reach the perfection. Um, so, back to derivatives. Um, in the previous lecture we were talking about derivative as the speed of change of the function at certain point. So if you have a function which is defined at some interval, now a or b can be infinite as well, minus infinity, plus infinity, or concrete values, and then you have some kind of a point inside this interval, then the limit of this which is increment of the function from point x0 to next point, so to speak, x0 plus delta x, divided by increment of argument as this increment goes to 0. I have actually called a derivative of this function. Obviously, if this particular limit exists, which means it exists in any way delta x infinitesimal infinitesimal goes to zero. Uh, so if it exists, then it's called a derivative and it basically measures the speed of the function change at point x0, exactly at that particular point. Because if you have two points, for instance, x0 and x1, you can always measure the average speed of change by subtracting from f of, uh, f of uh, x1 minus f of uh, x0 divided by x1 minus x0. But now we have to make this interval between x0 and uh, x1 as small as possible. This is, delta x is actually the difference. So this is, well, kind of algebraic sense, if you wish, uh, of the derivative at the speed of change of the function. And now I'm going to talk about a different approach to uh, uh, analysis of the function which basically leads to the same expression and uh, again my purpose is to put some kind of a base for this definition base of uh, real things which are standing behind this pretty formal definition limit of something I mean it should have some meaning so that's the meaning which we're talking about so that was speed of change was the meaning of the um, uh, uh, of this uh, derivative in algebraic sense and now we're talking about geometric uh, sense and we're talking about graph of the function um, f of x okay this is function f of x Oops. and we're talking about one particular point x0 and what I'm interested in right now is a tangential line to function to the to the curve which represents the graph of this function at this particular line. So the tangential line would it look something like this. Now, obviously, we have to talk about what is a tangential line. We know from the course of geometry what is tangential line to a circle. Well, it's a line which has only one common point, right? So that's kind of an easy definition. In case of just any function, it's not really exactly like that. Because, for instance, this line also has only one point in common with the graph of the function. But it's certainly not a tangential line, right? Now, in cases like this, In case like this, for instance, this is function 
uh, which are, uh, this is the graph of the function. Now, at this particular point, I can have many lines which have only one common point with with the curve of the function. Because if this, in this case, you can say, okay, we have to really um, define this tangential line as number one having only one point in common, but number two, the curve should lie on this on one side of this uh, of this uh, tangential line, because this doesn't really um, go by this uh, definition because the curve goes on both lines. But in this case, the graph goes still on one side, and we have multiple. Um, straight lines which have only one point in common. So we have to really talk about definition of the tangential line first. And um, uh, I, I can only suggest you something that tangential line is not only line which has the uh, one common point with this particular um, curve, but there are a couple of other properties. Number one, this line actually has another intersection. So we're not talking about one common point as being just a, an overall requirement. It's only a local requirement, which means there is some kind of a neighborhood of point X0 where this line has only one common point. And you can add actually that the line uh, uh, should, should, should that the, the curve in this neighborhood should should lie on one side of the of the tangential line. That's also important. But how can I prevent these points? Well, the, these points can be prevented by that exists at this particular point only one such line. So if there is only one such line, which in the neighborhood of point x zero has one uh, point, which is basically the line, the, the point which has coordinates x0 and function of x0, right? This is coordinates of this point, common point. So, the tangential line should go through this point. In the neighborhood of x0, there is a small neighborhood, okay? So, um, there is such an epsilon uh, where whatever I'm saying is true from x0 minus epsilon to x0 plus epsilon, if you wish. So there is some neighborhood where this line uh, has only one common point, which is this one, that the curve goes uh, on one side of this line, and um, it's only one and only one such line which has this um, common point. So this point, th this situation is excluded. But then, I have a very interesting point. And this is the point of the function y is equal to x to the third, uh, to the power of three. Look at this graph. Graph looks like this. Now, what is a tangential line in this particular case, when it, x is equal to zero? Well, actually, the only reasonable uh, answer is that the line which is actually coinciding with an x axis, right? So it looks like our requirement of having the curve, even locally, on one side of the, um, uh, the tangential line is not really necessarily true in some cases. So we really should approach this differently. Well, the way how I suggest you to approach the tangential line is exactly the way which I am going to use to come up with a formula uh, which uh, will help us to express the, uh, the equation for this line. Now, line is usually defined by two points, right? One point for the tangential line we always have. This is the point where it's supposed to, to touch uh, our curve. Now, the other point, well, it can be this or it can be this or whatever else. It's kind of difficult to define. What's easier is, if you have one line, what's easier is to define an angle this tangential line makes with 
some known line, like for instance, the x-axis, right? And that is actually the way we will proceed. How can I find out what is the, uh, the angle? Uh, in this case, it's better to talk about tangent of the angle um, of this uh, tangential line uh, with the x-axis. So, and that actually will lead us to a definition as well. So, let's approach it this way. What if I will take another uh, point which is somewhere in the neighborhood of x0, but I will make it a little bit further. Here is x1, okay? So this is the point x0, f of x0, and this is the point x1, f of x1. This is A, this is B. And let's consider the chord between them. And now what I am going to do is I'm going to move x1 towards x0. Basically the same thing as I was measuring the speed, if you remember, in the previous lecture. What happens? Well, the next position would be here, right? Next position would be here. And as x1 moves closer and closer to x0, my uh, line, my chord, if you wish, would be closer and closer to the line which we will probably be right to call a tangential line. What's important is that no matter how I move x1 to x0, maybe I will move it from here. So I will take this chord and this chord and this chord, etc. So if no matter how I move x1 to x0, my result, my limit, I'm not afraid to say the limit right now, my limit will be the same line, then that line actually should be called a tangential line, uh, obviously if this limit exists. Because in this particular case, this limit does not exist at all. Because if we move from, if we move from the left, our line would always be like this. If you move from the right, from the right, the line would be always like this. And they will never go to the same limit, obviously, which means that there is no limit. But in this case, when the line, when the curve is really smooth, then my limit exists and it can rightfully be called the uh, tangential line. Now, back to how can we define it algebraically. We have one point, so all we need is an angle between tangential line and, let's say, x-axis, right? And this angle can very well be measured by the tangent, because the tangent we actually do know. And here is how we can calculate it. So let's consider the first uh, the first version of my x1. So what is the tangent of the angle between this line and the x-axis, which is this angle? Well, obviously this is uh, increment of the function from x0 to x1, which is f of x1 min minus f of x0, right? This is the piece. Divided by, this is the catheters, and this is the catheters of this angle, right? So divided by x1 minus x0. And we are talking about limit of this as x1 goes to x0. Now, if this limit exists, that means that we will have the tangent of this tangential line, which is uh, passing through point x0 and is tangential to curve. So, uh, as in the case of... Uh, the uh, uh, derivative as a speed of change of the function, I prefer to call, um, instead of x1 and x0, I prefer to use x0 and delta x. 
delta x is the difference between so instead of um, writing this I will have limit with delta x infinitesimal and the ratio is f of x 0 plus delta x minus f of x 0 divided by delta x so this limit is a tangent of a tangential line to a function, uh, to the graph actually, to the curve which represents the graph of the function f at x at point x0. And this is just another uh, view to derivatives, how important derivatives are. Now, how important tangential lines? Well, we will have some problems which will illustrate importance of the tangential line. Uh, like, you know, some kind of a preview, just think about this. If the function has some kind of a maximum, then basically in the maximum tangential line is supposed to be horizontal, right? In the simplest case. So that's why it's very important to have this tangent of the tangential line to be equal to zero in this case, because the line actually has a zero angle with an x-axis. So tangent is equal to zero, and this is an indication of some kind of a maximum, or maybe minimum, or something else. We'll talk about this separately. My point right now is to come up with exactly the same formula for the tangent of the tangential line as I did for the speed of the change of the function. Seems to be completely unrelated things, but they go to the same formula for something which we call a derivative of the function. So that's why, basically, the, the, the basis of the whole calculus is to be able to understand how the function behaves. And I its derivative is very, very important characteristic of this function. Now, obviously, we can take this derivative at any point, not only point x0, but in any other point, which means that derivative actually might be a function of that any point, right? And this uh, this indicates that this is a derivative. It's just um, some kind of a notation. So using this notation, this is a derivative of the function f at point x0. But again, since we can take a derivative at any point, we can talk about a function a new function, which is a derivative of the function f. All right, so um, I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture on unizor.com. And um, it's probably very important if you take the whole course, actually, because the course, is, uh, course has many interrelated topics. Like, for instance, right now I'm talking about my previous lecture where I was talking about speed of the function change, right? So I, 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 I always reference to some other things. So I do suggest to take the whole course. Um, it, uh, it, it's actually a very good foundation for just a general knowledge uh, of mathematics. And also my point is that mathematics actually uh, helps you to develop your creativity, your logic, your analytical thinking which basically is helpful in any profession. So if you think that mathematics is basically the only purpose is to pass some exams, you're terribly wrong. Mathematics helps you even if you will be a, a, a doctor or a lawyer or a plumber or a, a architect or whatever else. In any of these professions, mathematics, even if it's not used uh, exactly as it is specified in the math, like formulas, etc. It's still important because it develops your thinking, your creativity, your logic, etc. All right, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.